I'm turning 66 later this month. And so my first full year at 65 has given me a sort of retrospective, you know, hindsight. And looking back, not only as my, at my 44 years of marriage, the six kids and the 21 grandkids, but also the 37 years that I've spent as a Catholic. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated the 30th anniversary of our book, Rome Sweet Home. And I'm so grateful to our Lord for how he blessed that. You know, I, Kimberly, I never imagined that the three weeks we spent writing, rewriting and editing each other and that sort of thing, we weren't even sure it would be published. But now... It's in over 30 languages by way of translation that's reached millions of people. Um, but the only thing I would say is this, however hard it was to become a Catholic, and it was really challenging, we've discovered it's no easier <laughs> to become a saint. And whatever we had to give up to enter the church, my career, my profession as a pastor and all of that, really can't compare to what we got in our Lord Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Holy Eucharist. We gained, in effect, heaven on earth. We gained divine life in sacrificing these aspects of our own human life, our family life. Uh, but it's, on the one hand, it isn't even worth comparing what we gave up to what we got. On the other hand, 37 years later, realizing that becoming a saint is the only reason we're here, and it certainly isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. We can't do it without the sacraments and the power of the Holy Spirit and that cloud of witnesses that we call the communion of saints but every morning I realize I need the grace of conversion. For us as Protestants, it was something one and done. It was over with. But for us as Catholics, we recognize we are not holy yet. We're not fully converted. And so conversion for us is lifelong. It has to be daily. It's never going to start becoming easy. And so when I see Evangelizing Catholics as one of my favorite books in the last 15 years or so. It's all about how we can get in step with this mission called the New Evangelization. I deliberately made the title a sort of double entendre so that we could not only get Catholics to evangelize, we could also see the need to evangelize Catholics. So it's not just a kind of childlike conversion that we have when we enter the church, say, 37 years ago. It's an ongoing conversion. And what does it take? Well, the sacraments, it takes the saints, but it really takes the daily discipline of prayer, the spiritual disciplines, the rosary, going to mass frequently, going to confession frequently as well. But it also means coming home and living this out with my bride, living this out with my kids. I'm so proud and grateful of our Lord for what he's done, you know, with Dr. Han the Younger, Michael, our 40-year-old, who's a professor of scripture and theology at one of the finest seminaries in the country. Gabriel's got his nine kids. He's coming to visit us here in a few short days. And he was a focused missionary. And I could go down the whole list, including our son, Father Jeremiah. But I have to say this, that if we understand the message of Rome Sweet Home or evangelizing Catholics or Catholics in exile, it feels a lot to me like spokes that converge upon the hub of the wheel, say with a bicycle or something, because the hub is Christ. We're not home yet. And yet, as St. Catherine of Siena would say, halfway home to halfway to heaven is heaven itself. Because if we're living in Christ, if we're following him, if we're walking with each other in the power of the Holy Spirit, despite our weaknesses, but sometimes precisely because of how we, we feel weighed down by our weaknesses, there really is a foretaste of heaven on earth in the mass, but also in family life and the other sacraments. And I think this is why we have something that the world just completely misses. And yet it's the very thing that the world is dying for. It's dying without. And just living this power of love through the Holy Spirit with the saints, you know, it's it can become like Catholic talking points. It can become a checklist of doctrines. But on the other hand, it really can become, you know, the Mysterium Fidei, where all of the doctrines can coalesce in a sacred mystery that is almost too good to be true. But what if it's true? What if it's all true? What if it's the truth and nothing but the truth that we call the Catholic faith? In that case, you know, we may be weighed down with all of these worldly burdens, but at the same time, as Paul would say, we carry in this earthen vessel heavenly treasure. And I think this is why we're not going to get in step with the world. We don't need to. This is not a timely message. It's timeless. And it's one the world is always going to push back on. But I think if we live it out well enough and be content with the fact that we are converting every day and getting 
trying to get closer to our Lord and to our Lady, we're going to look back and realize God does more with our less as long as we're close to Him. And again, this isn't just rhetoric or pietistic, you know, verbiage. This is really what we call the mystery of faith. 